people everywhere. Today you will hear a word from heaven that will change the course of your life. I'm believing that as we get into the word of the Lord today, the word will be taught and preached with clarity. It will bring balance and direction and it will lift your faith up to believe in the things of God. We believe that as you keep listening, the power of God will come upon you and meet your need. Welcome to the Hour of Solution. There's also something parading across Africa. People stay in coffins. For days and then for the longer it is the more enriched you've got let's say that they say if you stay in the coffin for four days for four next years money will come like water but after that you will die that is a that is a covenant you sign with the devil the blessing our heavenly father gives us the bible says he adds no sorrow to it why serve the devil for a short time make money and be rotten to the bone for nothing i mean why it's of no use I say it's of no use. Or what do you also say? I say it's of no use. Little a muscle of bread that God has blessed than the bounties of the king with demons on it. It is better to know that the five dollars I have in my pocket is blessed and was gotten well by the hand of God than to go for 10 million that is in the corridor of a demonic enterprise. In gotten gain. That you bow down to something you bow down to a power you bow down to a power so you might quickly get money money will be the, the, there's one guy they called they said a snake was vomiting money for them after the snake vomits the money for you then the contract the contract will be over your life you will end up in great destruction the way of the lord is better i said the way of the lord is better Go to Ezekiel chapter number 8. <laughs> this thing is, I, I thought I'll finish it today. We won't have to get into this. But Jesus has given you authority to break every spell. Mm, every spell. Mm. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, there may not necessarily be a Simon that may bewitch a city. There may be a woman or a man that may bewitch you. I'll tell you something. Whenever you come into union with a man or woman in union, and that person possesses witchcraft in their bloodline, they inject you with witchcraft. Listen very well. Amen. This is raw teaching. I said, whenever you come in union with a person who has witchcraft in them, in their bloodline, they infect you with witchcraft and wizardry. That's why it's very important. It's very, very important whom you open yourself to. Especially outside covenant. The, uh, you can be easily bewitched like that. Through foods, you can be bewitched. You can be made weak by food. Spiritually. You can be made very weak by food. You have to tailor make in your life those you eat from. And, and when you test their spirits, make sure it is the right spirit. Amen. Amen. Because if the anointing is on you, it's like the Philip's anointing. I'm telling you a lot of things will hide themselves and you will never get to know them. But if it's like the Peter and John anointing, you scout the enemy. You rout the enemy easily. Are you understanding of this? 
Some of you in school, your friends may buy you a necklace or sometimes even a ring and bring it to you. Don't take it. I said, don't take it. Especially if you are not working with God. They are not in the things of God. They give you, so this is, especially friends, people, or someone you think is envious of you. Is looking at a door to bewitch you. Yet you are not supposed to become afraid of the enemy. I was told many, you know, maybe a few years back. That I should be careful where I get something to rub my face when I'm sweating. Me, this face. You know where I've been. Hey, devil like trouble. To br- you bring me handkerchief to rub my face and you will take my glory. Fire will burn you from every angle in the name of the Lord. Amen. Oh, yes. I know in whom I have believed. We're not talking cheap stuff here. So when a person is talking about the depths of the things of God, uh, you better listen well, not just because it's from me, but anybody who has gone through stuff and come out, you better know that God is with that person. You better know that if there be fire, God deliver them. If there be water, God deliver them. If there be a sword, God deliver them. Know there is something, a power greater behind such a person. So friends, let me tell you this. Very simple. They're very simple. Don't just take things on, on surface level. Some men have not gone far because of certain witchcraft that has entered them. Some women have not gone far because certain witchcraft that has entered them. But Jesus by his blood makes all things new. According to the book of Revelation, it says, Behold, I make all things new. I make all things out new. I make all things out. Have respect of the covenant. Remember, he makes all things new. You remember, Jesus makes all things new. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse number 8. And then we'll come to Ezekiel chapter 11. I'll done, be done today with Ezekiel chapter 11. I don't have to go back again. <laughs> Then said unto the son of man, now dig into the wall. Dig where? And you're going to find a door. When you dig in the wall, I got in Ezekiel 8 and 8. It says, dig into the wall for behold there is a door. If you never dig, you'll never find the door. Fasting is a digger. Fasting helps you to dig. When you dig, you dig, you're going to find the door. When you find the door, you're going to find what the operating powers are behind the door. I said fasting is beneficial to you. Fasting does not help God. It helps you. Amen. Amen. You're not doing the church or myself a favor by fasting. You can eat for all you like. Fasting preempts for you to wait on God that he may open your eye into the invisible realm. Even if your eye has not opened to the invisible realm, believe you me, as you fast, you are chipping out the 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 the, the 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 brick that is resisting your flow. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig in the wall. Dig how? Dig where? Dig in the wall. And when I digged in the wall, behold, I found the door. That door had always been there, but Ezekiel never saw it. As great a prophet as Ezekiel was, he couldn't see that there was a door. And behind the door, there was something going on. Look at verse number 9, 10, and 11. And he said to me, go in and behold wicked abominations that they do there. Says you go inside now. Before you, you never saw a door. But now that you dug deep, you saw a door. Go inside, you're going to find the people are working witchcraft. So I went in and I saw. May God allow you entry point to see whom your lovers are and whom your enemies are. So by wisdom, you may order your life accordingly by the word of God. So they went in and they saw. They saw every form. At this time, he saw every form of creeping things. Talking about snakes, scorpions, creeping things, alligators. Creepy, creepy, creepy stuff. Abominable beast. When it says abominable beast, according to Levitical teaching, is all the things spelled out by Levitical law as unclean. 
they were found there. But was he sat outside the door, he couldn't see it. My glasses are fine, but they can never see that. <laughs> it takes a supernatural eye from God to see what is going be beyond the gate. And I'm not saying that everybody will become a seer so that you see by your eye. But I'm going to say that everybody can become a praying person with fasting incorporated with it. And that will chip off the old block. It will cause that which has resisted you and I. It will cause it to give way by the power of God. I don't care if it's from my father's line or my mother's line. It will chip it away by the power of God. The power from on high will come upon a person that seeks Jehovah. I went in saw and behold every form of creeping things abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel all the idols of the house of Israel ah Israel called anointed appointed of heaven why are you seven idols abominable beasts all idols of the house of Israel when I was a missionary to the Republic of Togo, it came into my knowledge. Not just my knowledge, I saw it practice. Even certain elders of a church would have a little idol in their family compound. They thought of it as a normal and a common thing. No offense, I have to tell you the truth. They thought of it, people were catechists. They had also idols. People were into the pastoral ministries. They were dealing with juju and talismans and all kinds of wicked, abominable things. And so they had to give me a name because they never saw anything. But I walked like a man in iron, iron garment. They used to call me Elo Kodogao, a short man in iron garment. And here I came. And we saw the blazing hot power of God. As it was then, so it is now. Nothing changed. Jesus did not change. I didn't change. His power never changed. Praise God. I have not come to, I have not come to raise the dead. I've come to speak to the living. Listen to the word of God. No power in this earth. No power under the earth. No power in the atmospheric heaven is ever going to unseat God's purpose in your shout your loudest amen. I feel an anointing for this day. Witchcraft covens, wizardry, people are peeping. There are peepers in peepers of the night. They peep into people's lives. They like to see what you shall become. For me, the way I go, you will never know. You think I'm here and I'm there. I don't put everything on Facebook. Salute. Hmm? <laughs> there are things you put on Facebook. It will Facebook you. Because there are people on it who never like your rising. Sometimes I wait. When I reach my destination point, I put, thank God I've been so and so and I, thank God I'm here. Facebook has now become a place where, uh, friends, good morning, my dear family. Which family? <laughs> You're putting your pictures, children's pictures there. Little, little kids have been bewitched. And we say, oh, we are, we are showing now. We are sh keep on showing, buddy. Keep showing. You're the smartest guy on the block. Keep on showing it. I waited for these kids to get to a certain age to introduce your picture to certain people. Because by that age, I, I have steamed them well. Like you steam a crab. I have steamed them well under the unction that God had put upon my life. If when I wasn't sure, I was not introducing them to anyone. But now I'm sure you try them. They, they themselves will fire rock. They will fire rocket, rocket back at you in the name of the Lord. They know how to pray. They know how to fast. They will pray you down by the power of God. That's why we're raising these kids. No creepy, abominable things, idols, nothing, none of these things would have authority of us. Look at verse 11, 12, and 13. And there stood before them 70 men of the of the ancient. 70 men, men, 
Moses needed 70 elders. These are 70 anointed elders of Israel who are supposed to be worshippers of Jehovah. But they are now into witchcraft. 70 men of the ancient of the house of Israel, of the ancients, aged. And in the midst of them stood Jazenia, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. And they said unto me, Son of man. Then he said to me, That's Jehovah. Hast thou seen what the ancient of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For the say, they say, the Lord sees us not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. So we have inhabited it. He said unto me, Turn thee yet again. And thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. You mean, this is not even sufficient. Creepy stuff. 70 elders now form a coalition. Because 70 formed a complete synagogue. So 70 formed a complete cabinet. There is a cabinet of Satan. They are well organized than most church people. Most demonic enterprises obey time. They be, obey order. They obey and honor hierarchy. They respect authority not like some church people the thing oh grace came I'm liberated I can go anytime I like you are becoming or very unbecoming when he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house which was toward the north and behold there sat women weeping for Tammuz he didn't see this before but now that God opened his eyes he saw women bowing down to the idol Tammuz then said he unto me has thou seen this O son of man turn yet and thou shalt see greater abomination than these then he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house and behold at the door of the temple between the porch and the altar there were five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east and they worship the sun. <laughs> they worship the sun towards the east. Their backs were towards uh, their backs were towards the temple of God and they face the east and they worship the sun not the living God. They were in the temple but they were not of the temple. I know this is hard preaching but this is truth. There are people who have ascended thrones, ascended pulpits, ascended kingdoms by reason of being in covenant with satanic entities. But their days are numbered. Watch it. Their days are numbered. I said their days are numbered. The devil never gives you a dollar and waits for you. He will come back and get a million. If he doesn't get it from you, he will bind your generation second, third and fourth. I'll be exacting from them one by one. He's no joker. He's a hard bargainer. Seven Christ is better. Then he said to me, verse number 17. Has thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a lie thing that the house of Judah that they commit the abomination which thou, they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. Witchcraft introduces violence. And have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I deal in fury. I shall not spare them. Neither will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice. Yet I will not hear them. Witchcraft will never let your voice be heard. This is a detestable, dangerous thing. Go to Ezekiel chapter number 11. Let's see if I can tap into it a little bit. And then let you go. Because I really didn't get into my message. Moreover the spirit of the, the spirit lifted me up and brought me into the east gate of the Lord's house. Which looketh eastward and behold a door. Say a door. And says of the, of the gate five and twenty men among them whom I 
I saw Jezania, the son of Azor, and Palatia, the son of Benaiah, princess of the people. He saw them. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief. And we give wicked counsel in the city. These are the people who, who bewitch the city. Which say, it is not near. Let us build houses. This city is Caldon. And we be the flesh. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. And the spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto me, Speak, thus saith the Lord. They have said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Ye have multiplied your slain in the city and have filled your streets thereof with the slain. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, your slain whom ye have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh, and the city is a cauldron, but I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. Ye have feared the sword, and I will bring a sword upon you, saith the Lord. I will bring you out of the midst thereof and deliver you into the hands of strangers, and will execute what? Judgment upon you. Witchcraft allows you into enemy hands. A believer has no there's no need for you going to a palmist, a psychic, calling psychic hotlines. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I said, praise the Lord. You got no business with that psychic, psychic hotlines. No. You free yourself from that. I say you free yourself from that. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. The works of the flesh are manifest. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry. Watch it, watch it, watch it. What? Witchcraft. You say to the church, witchcraft. You mean this is the church of Galatia. Paul is talking about sins of the flesh. How does witchcraft become a sin of the flesh? Before you enter into the spirit, it starts from the flesh. That's why I earlier told you that if you come in union in the flesh with somebody that has witchcraft in their bloodline, you infect yourself the same. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions. Heresies, envies, murders, and the, and the rest. Witchcraft is nothing to be toyed with. Envy is the first sign of witchcraft. A witch, a wizard, is always envious. When I had nothing, practically nothing, people were still envious of me. And I did not know why. Well, there's a glory on top of your head that makes people think you have this and that and that and the other, but you yourself know where you are. <laughs> and people are hating you for nothing, really. <laughs> they are despising you for nothing, really. You are calling your names in places that they want you finished. Because every time they see your picture anywhere, hmm, sometimes you, know, you send your picture innocently to someone. They also send it to another person, another person to another person. Then it reach a certain corridor. And so that thing becomes an annoyance for someone that you are still walking about here. <laughs> you are still looking fine. Me, I'll look fine. Even when I'm 70, you will never know it. I'm going to look fine. If you want to embrace old age like you're a caterpillar, you know, heading towards to destroy somebody. That's up to you. That's your choice. You, your thought life will generate you. Of, and, uh, let me just leave that alone. Praise God. Hallelujah. I preached at the side. Amen. <laughs> you, you, you can talk yourself into aging. I see a 35-year-old person. They are climbing a small, steepy something. Oh, oh my heart. Which heart? May Jehovah deliver you from the coven of darkness. 
Your man is very weak. Let them hear you. I say, may Jehovah deliver you from the coven of darkness. May every witchcraft, wizardry, my regulatory projections, astro, astral projections, projections from stars, sun, moon, that defy the order of Elohim. May all of them rank and file. May they be scattered by the fury of Jehovah. May the hand of God destroy all their gatherings. I pray the prayer of David. Let their counsel come to foolishness and let their gathering catch fire in the name of the Lord. Every counsel that is not a counsel of the Lord, that when the time I hands down, I will wear them out by the power of prayer and fasting and the name of the Lord. They will not stand in the congregation of the of the mighty or the righteous, for the Lord of the wicked will never ever follow my Lord. In this earth, when they leave you an inheritance, they have left you something. But one day you will die. I said one day you will die. You too will die. And you also have to leave that inheritance to somebody. But we have an inheritance from heaven. We have an inheritance from heaven. On a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross. On that cruel rugged cross. That the Roman soldiers erected. On that hill. When man could not pay for his sin debt. God by the Trinity stepped into a suit, dropped itself in the virgin womb of a girl called Mary, born in time, lived a sinless life on earth. In time, the Bible says, grew in knowledge and wisdom, was revered and favored by man as he grew in stature, so also grew he in wisdom. 30 years after this episode, his full ministry began to blossom not quite three years his ministry had to come to an earthly cessation only because there was another door that needed penetration by his blood he entered the heavens he opened the door for he could have become an earthly high priest and died but by his sacrificial death, showed his body in death, he opened the curtain. When he opened the curtain, down in my mother's womb, he named me, blessed be Jesus. That all the witches in the family line will never have authority over this boy. Down in the corridor of, of God's governmental authority, he had established that he would ordain appoint anoint you Calvary stripped Satan Calvary destroys witches the blood shed on Calvary destroys every marine kingdom marine operators the blood of Jesus is against you now the blood of Jesus is against you now when you gather, I invoke the blood. I have no power of my own. But the blood speaketh, oh my father. The blood speaketh. It speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Just imagine Genesis chapter 4. Abel's blood cried out from the ground. And God had, God had, God had Abel's blood. Abel, Talked in the heavens, Abel's blood made angels hear Abel's blood. You mean Abel? Yes. How much more? The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been purchased. Hallelujah. Better than American Express and Discover put together. Better than your ATM card. We have been purchased bought completely by the blood of Jesus Christ we cannot belong to any other authorities we belong to the government of God say ye say now that the powers that be they are ordained by God and God is a finality of the authority so help me serve a notice today on anyone thinking evil planning scheming your days are numbered upon the earth 
for I send to you the judgments of Jehovah. Your counsel shall be broken into. Your ill gain monies will rot at your hands. You will never see the sun smile on you. Neither shall the moon greet thee. The stars shall fight you which you have used. In the name of the Lord, we arise to pray. As the army of the Lord, you are a very cheap Christian. If you don't know your right in Christ, you make the blood of no effect if you don't know your worth and value in God. What kind of a Christian will go and do a consultation under a fetish? You make the cross of Jesus look invaluable. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Are you ready to pray today? Stand up, we are going to pray. Peace and many blessings. This has been the television broadcast series of the Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries. Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries, bringing salvation, healing, and deliverance. happy you listen to the broadcast and we want to give you an opportunity if you have not made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord as at yet. We believe that by receiving the person of Jesus into your life, your life will be made anew. The Bible tells us in John's Gospel that if we believe on him, he will give us the right or the power to become children of God. Your life will take a different turn, a better turn. Now simply pray after me, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and need your forgiveness. Forgive me of all my sins and wash me in your precious blood. I believe that Jesus Christ is a son of God and he came to die for my sins. Friends, if you pray that simple prayer under the basis and the authority of God's word, your spirit has been reborn. Find a Bible believing church that preaches and teaches the word of the Lord without any fear and grow in it or else just come right by our, any of our services and you'll be greatly blessed. The Lord bless you in Jesus name.